Zenith Proxy. Commonly used by experienced 2B2T players, running a proxy can help you securely share accounts with basemates, run AFK farms, and most importantly, avoid paying 20 bucks a month for priority queue. I'll try and make it quick, so stick around and I'll show you how you could be playing 2B2T for 5 bucks or less a month. You are watching. Kill your life. Please keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside your eyes at all times. What is a proxy? To skip the techno babble, a proxy is a middleman you use when you connect to a server. Kind of like a VPN, but not so encrypted and secure. Instead of connecting directly to 2B2T on our main computer, we connect our proxy server to 2B2T to begin sitting through the queue. And when it's time to play, instead of directly connecting to 2B2T, we open Minecraft and connect to our proxy's IP. You can use a spare computer, like your decade-old laptop, to host your proxy, but for the best results, I recommend paying for a VPS, or a virtual private server. For a fraction of the price of Priority Queue, we can pay to rent out a weak yet very affordable server that's located within a huge data center very close to the 2B2T servers. Our cheap server is more than capable of hosting our proxy and will sit in the queue for us 24 hours a day. There are drawbacks to using a proxy, however. After 8 hours of playtime, the server is going to kick you. There's no way to prevent this and it's going to happen every 8 hours you play. Also, if you get kicked for any reason, no matter whether it's using a misconfigured client module or simply being AFK, you'll have no choice but to wait through the queue again. What do I need? Well, not much. A Minecraft account, about 5 bucks to pay for the VPS, and a Discord account if you want to set up the Discord bot. But this step is optional and not a requirement. I'm going to be covering two different VPS services, Vulture and DigitalOcean. Links to both are in the description. DigitalOcean has the benefit of being free for the first 60 days as long as you sign up using my referral link, while Vulture has the benefit of being slightly cheaper per month. So if you're not sure you're going to use a proxy for long, use DigitalOcean's free trial. If you're setting up several proxy accounts all running simultaneously, use Vulture if you want to save some money. Also, just a heads up, don't be concerned when these sites immediately ask for a form of payment. You can either choose upfront how much money to deposit, or my preferred method, to be charged as you go. That way, if you start a $5 a month plan and then cancel it after 24 hours, you're only going to get charged about 17 cents. Okay, we're ready to begin, but we're actually going to start off by setting up our Discord bot. If you don't have Discord or don't want to use a Discord bot, feel free to skip this section. We'll be creating an empty Discord server to hold our bot. Be warned, adding a proxy Discord bot to a public Discord server can result in catastrophe, depending on the settings of your proxy as well as the settings of the Discord server itself. Our Discord bot will require two text channels, so besides the default general channel, which I'm going to use, I'm going to create a second channel called Chat Relay. I'm also going to be creating a new role in the server, which I'm going to give to myself. Now, in a web browser, go to the Discord developer page and click New Application. Give it a name, confirm your humanity, and then click Create. The bot created, we can now go to the Bot tab on the left and then retrieve our bot's Discord token, which we're going to save for later. Further down on the same screen, we're going to enable Message Content Intent, and then at the very bottom, save our changes. Lastly, we go to the OAuth2 tab, enable the Bot Permission Scope, then go slightly further down and enable the Send Messages Text Permission. Then at the very bottom of the page, we're going to now have a URL, which we're going to copy and paste into our web browser to invite our Discord bot to our server. With the Discord bot created, let's move on to setting up our virtual private server. On Vulture, we're going to start by adding our startup script, which will be used to download Zenith Proxy to any servers we create in the future. From the main dashboard, we're going to click the Orchestration tab, then click Scripts we're going to be adding a new startup script. Name your script and then leave the type as boot. Now we're going to open the Zenith Proxy startup script from GitHub, link in the description, and we're going to copy all of the text contents, which we're going to paste into Vulture. After adding the startup script, we can now begin deploying our server. We're going to be using a shared CPU server, and the best server location for 2B2T is going to be the New York area. Down by the server plans, we're going to be picking the second cheapest plan for $3.5 a month. 
Unfortunately, their cheapest plan, two and a half bucks a month, is not compatible with Minecraft. So three and a half dollars a month is our cheapest option. Disable the automatic backups, which is unnecessary and costs extra money, and then click Configure Software to proceed to the next page. Our operating system is going to be the newest version of Debian, which is currently 13. Under Startup Script, pick your newly created Zenith Proxy Startup Script, and then give your server a name in the Server Label box. None of these additional features are needed, so now we can go to Deploy, and then take a little breather break while the server takes a few minutes in the background to set up. With the server now online and running, we're able to open the console of our server, which is going to ask us to log in. You can find your login credentials on your server details page. Your username is going to be root, which we can simply type in, and your password will be a long string that we're going to copy to our clipboard. On Vulture, pasting from your clipboard is a little bit weird. We're going to click this little side tab here, click the clipboard button, and then paste our password into this text box and click paste. With that done, we can hit enter and we'll be logged in. Welcome to your server's console. This is where all the magic happens. We'll start by pasting in this first line. Again, you can find it in the description, which is going to open the server's 25565 port for Minecraft. You should only have to enter this command once, and as long as it says rule added, you're good to go now and forever. With that rule added, you're now only going to need three different commands to basically do everything related to launching your proxy. Tmux will make your console persistent, or otherwise, as soon as we close our console window here, it's going to close our proxy as well. Tmux is a crucial command, so don't forget it. CD Zenith Proxy will enter us into the Zenith Proxy installation folder. And finally, period slash launch will launch our proxy. The rest of the instructions are identical, no matter if we're on Vulture or DigitalOcean, so use the provided timecode to skip the DigitalOcean tutorial and proceed to the first time setup. On DigitalOcean, we can begin by clicking the Create Droplet button. Select the New York region for the best ping on 2b2t. It doesn't matter which data center we're using as long as we're in New York. Our operating system is going to be Ubuntu, and our version is going to be 24.04. .04. You should be on the basic shared CPU plan by default, so just make sure you're on a regular CPU and then select the cheapest plan of $4 a month. Create a password, which you probably won't be using much anyhow, and then for the important part, expand the advanced options, enable add initialization script, and then open the Zenith Proxy startup script from GitHub, link in the description, copy all of the text, and then paste it into DigitalOcean. A little further down, you can give your deployed server a name, and once you've created the droplet, we can take a little break while the server takes a few minutes to set up. Once our server has been fully deployed, open the server's console. You'll only be using three different commands to do just about everything related to launching your proxy. Tmux will make your console persistent, or otherwise closing the console window is going to shut down our proxy as well. The Tmux command is crucial, so don't forget it. CD Zenith Proxy will enter us into the Zenith Proxy installation folder, and finally, period slash launch will launch the proxy. Now we must complete our first time setup. Our Zenith Proxy platform is Linux, so enter 2 and hit enter. Our environment is a VPS, so enter 2 again. Next, they're going to ask for a port. To this, we will enter 25565. If you follow the previous instructions to set up our Discord bot, we're going to enter Y to enable the bot, and then paste in our bot's Discord token that we saved earlier. If you're on DigitalOcean, paste using Shift, Control, and V, and if on Vulture, remember to paste by clicking through that side tab. Next, it will begin asking for channel IDs. For this part, make sure you have developer mode enabled within your Discord settings. I'll be managing my bot through this default general text channel, so I'm going to right click on the text channel and click copy channel ID, which I'm then going to paste into my console. The role ID for management permissions is going to be the ID of that bot controller role I created, which you will also copy it by right clicking with the developer mode enabled. 
I am also enabling the Discord chat relay, so I will enter Y and then paste the relevant channel ID in. We're nearly finished. If everything worked, entering connect will provide you with a Microsoft login code. If you set up your Discord bot correctly, then this login code should also be sent to you over Discord. After signing in to your Minecraft account, voila, your proxy should now be in the 2B2TQ. You can whitelist your account through your VPS console or through your Discord bot, which will even give you a convenient button to press if you've already been rejected by the whitelist. If you didn't catch it earlier, you can copy your proxy's IP address from the VPS dashboard, and now you're ready to join. If you run into any issues down the line, open up the console and take a look for clues. There's a good chance all you'll need to do is either enter the connect command, or if Zenith Proxy has fully crashed, enter the period slash launch command. If your problems continue, go to your VPS and reinstall your proxy server. You'll have to repeat the first time setup, but sometimes the best way to fix the problem is to just start fresh. That should cover everything you need to know to get your proxy online and in the queue, but I haven't even begun to configure Zenith Proxy's countless modules. That'll be another video for another day, but in the meantime, make sure you have at least anti-AFK and auto-E enabled. If you do want to see a video guide for how to configure Zenith Proxy's modules, leave a comment down below, and if there's enough demand, I'll make it. If this video helped you, I'd appreciate if you hit the subscribe button to help me. Thanks for watching.